Yo, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the greatest show on earth. I bring you Michael Dreyer in this corner. Michael Dreyer standing at four foot eight, uh, about a <laughs> a buck thirty five, ready to get his ass whooped as the undercard of tonight's special event. As he goes toe to toe against the great almighty Cameron Van Hoy. Standing at about six foot four. <laughs> oh, man. No, I'm not yet. Hold on. This is, yeah. Standing at about six foot four. Healthy height. All the women in the room are swooning over. Oh, and there's Michael. Almost didn't see him. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry. I didn't see the contender signing behind me. Oh. Do you have a question, son? No, <laughs> did not get an Apple box. I'd be the guy the way in with the Apple box. Like the guy, like, you know, one guy walks up and then I go up. Step. <laughs> oh man, that's funny, dude. How the hell are you? Now, nah, what's going on? Uh, Talk to us. Who? Everyone who's here. It's just us. No, they care. Who? Everyone is going to be watching this. Oh, but that doesn't count because that's not real right now. It's just you. I could and probably will destroy all this footage before you send it out. Therefore, theoretically, it's just me and you talking right now. Yeah, that's true. There's a chance you didn't press that button. There's a chance this... we're just a bunch of fucking morons. Yeah, talking into a microphone. In yeah, your room. I might get wrapped up with something else and be like, "Ugh, I can't post that." Mm -hmm. And then what did we do? Just what? What is this? What we did last week. What is this? An hour and a half podcast that went nowhere. Nowhere. So let's think about what we did last week. Yeah. And we could be doing it again. Now, last week we were talking to no one. Nobody. So right now I could also be talking to no one. Nobody. Chew on that philosophy. Dude, I kind of like this though. I enjoy interfacing with you with microphones in front of me. It's just, I, I think we should do this even if we're not trying to talk yeah. on the internet okay. like just in general my voice more i i don't i don't hear anything different i'm not wearing headphones you know what i mean i just enjoy kind of like leaning in like this when i talk we should be the guys just walking around with microphones, microphones all, day all day long that'd be that'd be a good skit actually go to the gym just have microphones like 24-hour podcast guys that'd be funny it's the premise 24 hour podcast guys, guys that are podcasting everywhere they go. So we're like at the gym, but we got these microphones with like cables hanging out into our pockets and we're like doing reps and like talking to each other. But we're just like, yo, come on, you can do this one more. Come on, dude. One more, one more, one more, and one more time. Sponsors today are by <laughs> yeah. KRS. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally go to the bench and then like bring these things and like set them up by the bench, put it down and start just like, <laughs> You know, people will be looking at us like, what the fuck are they doing? Yeah. That's good. That's a good skit. Let's do it. It's you kind of went to the gym. It's kind of fun. Yeah. I go to the gym. Do you? I, dude, I go to the fucking gym, bro. Wait, 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 wait. Do you? Or are you just one of those people that go in the gym and say you're working out, you know, for like the idea of it? Like those people you see on the treadmills that are like on their phones or reading magazines and like they're like well no i did 30 minutes on the treadmill like but did you did you or are you just like moving for 30 minutes like do you really work out or are you like there moving your body like are you pushing yourself really trying to get you know results to happen or are you there to make yourself feel like you did it you done yet yeah, just waiting on an answer. Cool. Not going to get that answer, huh? No. Why don't you tell everybody what the answer is on that one? I thought it was just you and me, bro. 
I used to think that too. Things change, man. That was her. You did that. You did that. <laughs> you did that. You're going to be standing up there at my wedding going, you did this. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's all your fault. Okay, you did this. You did this. Uh, you're the best thing that's happened, <laughs> Oh man. Um, so you know, I actually wanted to talk about movie stuff, um, and not just us. Uh, I never talk about us right now. Yep. Yeah. Because I think there's there's something worth talking about. So Ben Affleck. I don't know if anyone knows this, but Ben Affleck. Uh, he's an actor. Um, Ben Affleck, who is a great actor in my opinion, and a great filmmaker. And I'm interested to know Mike's take on this. I'm auditioning for a project of his right now, so I think he's wonderful. I think he's done no wrong. So that's my opinion. Cool. I agree. Um, His brother's great. I think his best friend, Matt Damon's great. I think they're incredible. If I don't get the role, ask me again next week. Yeah. So he has started a new production company. He was just interviewed by Andrew Sorkin, who also infamously just interviewed Sam Bankman Freed, which we've been riffing on. And just what a story there. And why is nobody watching it? Why aren't you watching it? Yeah, what are we doing? Can we go to that video? Oh, pause. Go scroll down. Get yeah, go to the page. Right scroll. Yeah, 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 yeah. Above that. Yeah, that was the first. That one. yeah, that one. Click it. Click it. Watch it. Comment. Like. Hey. Share with some friends. Come on, share with some friends. Oh God! Give Thank you. Here, Thank please. you. So some respect. So uh, Andrew Sorkin interviewed. Love his work. Did you see West Wing. Um, different Sorkin. Different Sorkin. Oh. Yeah, Andrew Sor- Andrew Sorkin's a commentator on finance and business oh. for CNBC. Um. Aaron Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin is the screenwriter and now director. You weren't doing Aaron Sorkin on those skits? That was Andrew Sorkin. Bro, you crushed Aaron Sorkin. I think we have another skit coming out soon, guys. A good Aaron Sorkin skit. So anyways, so Andrew Sorkin interviewed um, Ben Affleck, who has started a new production company. And he started with some finance dude. I don't know the guy's name. Some guy, he's financing a lot of things, private equity money. Okay, the dude, I think, put a lot of money into Top Gun. So he plays around in movies, of course, a lot of other projects and things like this. Um, And, you know, he's got a lot of backing behind him and they they start a production company. Now, what is their edge? Okay, so he pitched this thing as if it's it's a creator's first production company, right? It's a production company centered around creators. Now, that's not like a new concept, Right. Charlie Chaplin did this back in the day with Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford. Okay. Do you know about this? United Arts. Yeah. That was like the, that was the first idea of this. They were legends in their day. How far did that go? I mean, it's the company's still around. Right. But are they what it originally was conceived to be? No. I don't think so. I don't think now just an exhibition. It's just theaters, right? United Artists? No. I mean, I mean, uh, X, uh, distribution. No, 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 no. It's still a company, and I've seen them do things recently. I mean, look, that company's been around for a long been time. For a while. I think what's his name? Tom Cruise. I think ran it for a while. Oh yeah. Um, which is interesting because talk about like a company by a creator by an artist, talent led, star led. You know, like look, let's be real. The real idea when a, when an actress says we're starting a production company that's led by the creatives means it's led by the actors right that's what that means generally because actors always want to have the control in a company on a film right because they have the control the actors own the business movies get made off of actors names i mean that's still how it is less marvel movies and disney stuff you know like it's changing a little bit now there's this whole new talk of do people even go to the movies for movie stars anymore which affleck spoke a bit to that point in the talk that he had the other day when he was kind of introducing this company about how he believes there's just a lot of brand recognition around people like himself, his wife, Jennifer Lopez, 
you know, his contemporaries and friends that you can't immediately measure as a metric, but it's still very strong, mainly because a, like the movie going audience has kind of come up with these people. This would be an audience that's kind of like our target demographic, right? Like we've come up with these actors. They put out something good. We want to see it. We know. And like, look, let's be real. The last movie that Ben Affleck and Matt Damon made was the one with Ridley Scott. What was that? Uh, the Duel. The Duel. Very good. Fantastic movie. Nobody saw it. That movie tanked. I mean, it was an absolute flop. Even Ridley Scott was like pissed and like vocally, publicly saying like, what the F? He said it's this damn millennials and their phones, which is why this movie didn't do it. Sorry, Incredible movie. Let's just give him a minute. All right, the joke's over, dude. For the text. Yeah, yeah. What were we talking about? Um, just you know how assholes on their phones are destroying the movies. Gotcha. Yeah. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, no, I mean, I agree. Like, I don't like to go to a movie theater and someone has, like, fucking phone on and they're just, like, talking in the movies. It ruins the movie. Yeah. So, anyways, um, so he's starting this company. It certainly has not been done. This is not, like, the first time, right? As we just referenced. I mean, this is an old tradition. Those legends did it. It's been done multiple times throughout. We've seen actors have upstarts, start companies. Even to this day, you've got, you know, uh, Brad Pitt has Plan B and really is behind incredible movies, all kinds of movies, movies like Moonlight, you know, movies like 12 Years a Slave, so many movies Plan B's been behind. There is Appian Way, which I believe is Leonardo DiCaprio's production company, which does a lot of stuff. Mark Wahlberg has had a big hand in a lot of film and television stuff, Entourage most notably. Uh, very recently, what's her name? Reese Witherspoon with Hello Sunshine which she sold for a billion dollars, which I would love to get into that because whoever ran that company was a really sharp genius because not only like, look, that company is not worth a billion dollars. It's not, it's, it's not even a controversial thing. That company today is not worth a billion dollars. Whoever bought that is holding the bag, but they were able to sell it because they utilized the NFT thing and all the production that they had going. She was so big into being like world of women and all these NFTs and like really promoting them. She pushing world of women? Big time. That's why that blew up? Big time. Uh, she was huge behind the world of women NFT. How's that I mean, all NFTs prices are way low. They look, they still have a community. But did she like drop them? Oh yeah, yeah. She certainly changed her profile picture. The profile picture was world of women and it's no longer world of women. Wow. She sold the company. She doesn't have right. to wear the profile picture anymore because they did they, they did all that, she worked that to way. sell that company. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. But it, it wasn't her though. Like someone at her company and actually, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was very sharp. Whoever was there was just like, yo, there's an opportunity here. We can make ourselves look very tech forward. We're going to build IP around these tech brands using NFTs as technology with all the other productions that they have already. And they sold for a billion dollars. I mean, look, Snoop and his team, which those people are geniuses as well. They were also very forward on NFTs, blockchain, really use that. I, I just think that Snoop is following through more. Like Snoop even posts this kind of crash that's happened. Mm -hmm. His, he still believes in the technology. He started his music label. Death Row is like entirely on NFTs. He's now releasing his songs as NFTs. He's not releasing them other ways. He's not putting his new music on Spotify. He's not putting it in. He's literally dropping his songs as NFTs and saying, if you want to own my music, buy the NFT. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. He can, he can, he doesn't have to shill shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, you want to hear his, he's has, yeah. Reese Witherspoon doesn't everyone's have to shill gonna anything to, either. Gonna buy his music, right? Reese Witherspoon doesn't have to shill anything either. Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, but you have to go see the movie. Making a movie is a lot harder than him making a song, putting it as an NFT. But like you have nowhere else you could hear it now. Nowhere else. But if you buy the NFT, people are going to buy the NFT because they're just buying the song. You know? <laughs> but now it's, in the, it's as an NFT. Am I wrong about this? He kind of basically just gave you no choice but to buy NFTs if you like him. And you want to hear his music, right? There's more of a power there than someone like you or me who's like, hey, I'm going to create NFTs. I don't have a fan base yet. I don't have a or big enough fan base. I don't have people who will just follow my every word the moment I click a button. 
So I have to first build that along with an NFT. He's a superstar. You know, how many followers does he have? That doesn't take away from anything that I'm saying. I'm you're saying you're absolutely right. All, the only does. point I'm that I'm making. Like, of course, it's going to work for him. He, no, no, listen. The moment's you know, always going to be up for him because it's like not even an NFT or box. I don't think that's true. The point that I'm making is that it's one thing to ride the wave when everyone's riding it. Look, I mean, Jimmy Fallon, everyone was kind of on this wave when it was going up. Now that it's not going up, how many are still out there trying to catch waves? I'm just saying. And how many have come to shore and been like, I'm not into this? I'm just saying it's easier for Snoop Dogg, someone like Snoop Dogg to uh, still be. That's a given. It's easier for celebrities to sell anything. It it was easier for them in the bull market. right? Specifically with music. I I feel like you're trying to like make a hub, but it's pretty obvious. Yeah. Yeah, What? I don't know. No, I'm saying because you're saying, and he's still following through. And I'm yeah. saying, well, it's, it's it's like it's there's no like bear market for him when it, you know it's like you want to buy my music, and buy the NFT. That's the music. I don't know, man. You know, I don't know. Anyways, so Ben Affleck is starting this company, and the first movie that they've made is the story about Nike brokering the deal with Michael Jordan, and it's a it's good. It's cool. Right, it's a good story. Ben Affleck plays the guy. I mean, Michael Jordan's documentary was like the best documentary of the year. Oh yeah, I mean, sneaker culture, like basketball, like all sorts of stuff is going to play into this movie. It's going to be an Amazon movie, and and look, Ben Affleck makes a good movie. There's no question about that. The guy makes a good movie. I love his movies. He's so good. Argo, The Town. I like those movies. Yeah. Live by Night. I didn't see that one. Didn't look good. I liked it. I liked it. Um, Goodwill Hunting, great writer. He really is a great writer. Write that. Yeah. Oh. Why well, they say is that what you're getting into? You want to get into that? I don't know. The story, I William mean, Goldman. Right. That's the story. I've been more Matt Damon. Oh, I'm not going to say that Matt wrote more. No, if I had to guess, I would say Ben is probably the better writer of the two. You think he wrote more than? Than, than I Matt. think I think I mean you 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 know the play right the comedy that assumes that it's Matt Damon Matt and Ben you know the play didn't what's her name do it yeah, yeah, Mindy, yeah, Calling? Mindy Calling she wrote it as like Matt and Ben but it's really just like Matt Damon like just like working at the computer all day and then like Ben comes in the room he's like hey man how's that going <laughs> and he's he just he's like a pothead and doesn't like, that's funny I mean that's the theory that's funny but I would actually go the opposite direction I think that. You know, Ben has shown himself to be a really thoughtful filmmaker, really know how to tell a story cinematically. Like he gets it. He understands movies. He understands character. That's his stronger suit over acting. And I'm not one of those to shit on him as an actor. I think he's a movie star. I think he's really good at what he does. I enjoy watching him. I liked him in Gone Girl. I like him in a lot of films. Um, Now, um, Matt Damon, on the other hand, I think is a phenomenal actor. Right. Like, I think his, he as an actor, he's, there is something a little bit more. There's, I don't know what you'd call it, but talented. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's one way you could put it. Um, but I've never seen him direct. I've, yeah. I've never seen him direct. And I've never seen him write a movie outside of with Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck's ben written Affleck movies Affleck on his own. Movie? Yeah. Ooh. He wrote, um, the town he wrote the town yeah and then i think he wrote argo as well oh, and live directed. and he wrote live by night which was a great screenplay i remember reading that screenplay before the movie came out i like ben affleck i like ben affleck i, I fucking love him i think he's a badass um so he started this company but here, here's the question though it's like what's the edge right so he says that the edge one of the things that he says is his edge with this company is that he can pull out 15% of the budget just by cutting costs, right? And the way that he said he's going to cut costs is, look, movie sets are bloated. There's no question. He was he talked right to it. He's like, look, when the DPs think that they need 10 condors and you know all these light rigs and all this stuff, he's like, we're not going to get it. And when the director's like, we got to go to Prague to shoot this scene inside an apartment, he's like, no, we're shooting it in Sherman Oaks and we're saving money. And I can save 15% of a budget right there. It's like, okay, cool. The guy knows how to make a movie. He's been on a million and one sets. He he sees where it's bloated. So yeah, can he, is there some room there? There might be. The tough, the tough part about saving money on a set is that the crew doesn't really give a fuck. 
And he also spoke about this. He's like, the second that they started giving at least actors no back end and just saying, we're going to pay you up front, you immediately dis- you made them you know unincentivized for that movie to be successful. They're getting paid no matter what, it doesn't matter which is kind of the model that it's in now. So he's saying, one, you have to put out, you have to give everyone some skin in the game, incentivize everyone. Two, you have to do the same for the crew. So he wants to create a pool for the crew so the crew could participate, which is a very Web3 idea. This is what people, yeah, this is what people in crypto and film three and Web3 have been talking about for the last year, which is find ways to give the crew a piece of the pie, which I think is smart because, I mean, crews... They they move slow, like you know. Not all of them. Man. No, that's true. That's true. Not, not all. Not all of them. A lot of them are just got the fuck home, dude. I mean, I there's different experiences. You know, there are some people who, who drag their feet and they're like, I get paid, and I, you know, I'm a union man or woman. But there are people who are like, my incentive is to get home as fast as possible. Well, wouldn't it be great and though? Some people love it. Some people just like I take pride in my work. It right, depends on their right, right. Well, that's what I was, that's right. what I was gonna say. But wouldn't it be great if the crew was like, "Yo, we want this movie to be amazing. We want it to come in on budget. We want the budget to be as low as possible because we really are gonna participate in the success of this movie. So we want it to be the best movie it can without costing too much because the more it costs, the more it eats into our potential profits." And the worse it is, the more that could eat into our potential. But like, wouldn't that be nice if there was a way to do that with creative technicians? Or no, you don't. You don't think so? That's not like an immediate y- yes. All everyone, gaffers, grips, everybody. I guess so. I mean, I'm just trying to think who, if that would motivate everyone. I mean, is there not another? I mean, yeah, sure. I guess yes. I don't know. I was just thinking about. I think. I think it would. I how, think it, I think it absolutely. How, how would that work? Listen, people are different when they have skin in the game. One, how much skin would the crew get? Okay, let's say. Is it enough for them to care any more than they did with how they're getting paid? If if it's structured the right way, let's say a movie is made for three million bucks, and it happens to be that movie that gets a twenty million dollar sale. Okay, and there is. For easy math, let's say it's $5 million cost. There's $15 million of profit right in there. And let's say the crew is getting, even if it's 10%, so that'd be $1.5 million goes into a pool for the crew, right, out of profits. So that $1.5 million gets distributed against how many people are on that set? 100, 200? It's so complicated. Some people work so much more and harder than others. You can't do that shit. For the crew thing, it's got to be everyone's getting pari passu. I don't think you can get into the details like that. The above the line can get more, but you give the crew something. Best believe that the crew is going to be complaining about that. Shit. Really? When right now they're getting zero? Yeah, eventually. Eventually, eventually, maybe not in the beginning. Eventually, when they're... What if it, well, okay, then what if it's for days worked? That's an easy system. You could figure out a very easy system. Just say, hey, it's just based off days work. If you're on this set working on payroll, those days, if you do, the, if the movie's a 30 day shoot, if you do a full 30 days run, you're a one. If you do 15 days, you're half in the pool. You know, you, there's, listen, there's a way to figure it out. It's not complicated. Okay. Look at the world and all the wild finance that occurs. That's an easy solution. We'll put you in charge of it, Mike. That's your job. I don't think it's necessary. You don't think you should pay the crew I mean, profit, like pay a, piece, crew. a piece of profits, like incentivize them. I love the crew. I think crew works their fucking ass off. So I'm anything for giving crew more. I don't know if it's going to incentivize anyone to work any different. That's what I'm saying. I, I really think, okay. Yeah, I I, I've been. So. I, yeah, I don't think so. Did, did, I I disagree with you. I have been in spots before where crew is like. For grace, for lunch, they don't want to give it to you, right? It happens. And it generally happens. By the way, grace for lunch is like sometimes you're trying to get a shot, right? You've been setting the shot up all day. You got to go to lunch six hours in from your start time. And you're in the middle of shooting the shot. You know that if you stop shooting to go to lunch and you come back to it, to get back set up again and get back into shooting is going to be a real pain in the butt. So – you ask for grace. You say, hey, can we get grace? Can we get an extended period of time to just nail this shot? And when the crew's feeling the movie and everyone's in a good, they're like, yeah, 
Yeah, grace, they call it, right? Whatever. But when the crew's in a bad mood, like by day 20 on the shoot when everyone's beat, they start going like, no, no, we just want to take lunch. That suck. That can suck two hours out of your day. Two hours out of a day is tens of to hundreds of thousands of dollars, potentially millions, depending on the movie that you're on. So I disagree with you. There are many times I've seen crew, even the coolest crews get to that. So, and I think if they're all aligned and incentivized, like, hey, this is our movie. I think all of those kinds of things can start getting stripped out. And that stuff adds up. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's never I don't know started. if we'll see. I mean, I don't know if we'll see. I don't know if it's going to even happen. A uh, we're all, we're talking that. hypotheticals. I'm saying hypothetically, I've met a lot of crew. And some, just as it is, are incredibly proud of the project they're working on and want to do the best job because they're proud of what they do just in general. Um, the same way me as an actor or anyone who's not getting back in can still just do the best job that they possibly can. Because uh, I don't think crew... I think by saying that you are assuming that most crew don't have pride in their work. You have to incentivize them. I'm not saying that most. If this needs to be done, it seems like it needs to be done. Even if this helps. One is assuming that crew is not working at their best potential. Even if 10% could work better if they had some skin in the game, it's worth it. I, look, I'm all for giving crew. I mean, look, once again, I'm, I'm, I'm team crew i think crew deserves everything and more so i would never stop crew from getting 10 percent equity on it uh, but I'm, i just don't know if that is a needed or would have an effect as much as they could say i'm a believer that when people have skin in the game they work better sometimes yeah i think that's i is. think that's a fact throughout life i think we've seen it again and again and again in all business settings and all forms of life it's why certain economic systems work better than those. I think that when people have skin in the game, the more you can do that, the better they work on average. Yeah, but is it's that, always going to work in that favor. Skin in the game. Skin in the game is them actually having a piece of like something is if they don't work hard, they're losing something like they put money into it. They don't have any money. Into That's it. the best skin in the game. But if you can't get that, which you're not going to get it because you're not asking the crew to invest. The second best is that they have a potential for the upside. Yeah, hey, we'll see. I mean, also you have to it has to be proven to work enough where uh, the movie needs to make a profit enough for it to matter. Well, that's what I like about uh Ben Affleck. He diluted to like what 250 people, 300 how many people are from these movies, right? I mean, there's even like post-production people that they count. There's people who, you know, are contracted out to just do a couple of works here and there. I'm coming on for a day of work to do Okay, so we did the math at 10% on a $15 million profit that's 1.5 million. Let's assume there's 300 people on the crew who are getting this full benefit. You have to work a minimum of 30 days on the movie, let's assume, right? So 300 divided by – what is that? You go to your phone just because you see me on my phone. Yeah, because I don't know who you texted. That right. would be everybody getting $5,000 extra. If the movie made. If the movie sold for $22 million. Now it would be like, you made it for five, you sell it for 22. This is hypothetical. Sell it to Amazon. Now you go to the box office and you do 100 million at the box office and you're you're putting up profits of $40 million. Those numbers go up. Yeah. I still, all right. So then what about the movies that have people attached? That's like, this movie's not going to make money. Sure. You're attached to a movie. You're like, yo, this movie can make money. Leonardo DiCaprio is the lead of it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but then all of a sudden, this movie could Right. But then all. Sure. But then all of a sudden a Blair Witch comes along again or a Get Out comes along again or something else comes along again I'm interested and in everyone that. and everyone makes a fortune. All right. And then everyone's like, oh, fuck. Like, right. it does happen. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, what else did he say that was interesting? Um, That's the whole thing is I honest to God don't know if anything he said is really that interesting. That's my that's my personal take. I think it's interesting that he's making movies. I love the guy making movies. He's going to make great movies, but I, mean, this idea I didn't hear artist, Yeah. The, the artist led to me true. is not new. How many, We've how seen many it a million times. Companies? All of them. Everyone. So how is that new? It's not. That's the thing. So it's like, okay, what's new here? Well, we're going to give a little bit of money to the crew. Okay. We just discussed that in great detail. You think the crew means nothing. I think they mean everything. Um, what? That's what you just said. What are you saying? You don't want to pay the crew. Are you fucking kidding me right now? That's what you just said. I said, I love the crew. The crew means everything. But that was like a way of being like, I don't want to pay him. That was like capitalist shit. 
that was like, oh, I love the crew so much, but I don't know that we need to pay him. I don't think it means anything. Really? No, no, that was like, Everyone, that was like communist shit. You were like, forty-seven, sixteen, no, that's, or whatever the fuck. That's a very. I literally just said, yo, I don't think this would work, but holy shit, please pay the crew more. I, I'm totally anything that will get the. I'm not paying them. I'm just an actor. Fucking pay them ten percent. And that, by the way, I just don't think. That I'm not sure if they need incentivization. I also said I love that's my so that's my proof right there, actually, that it will work. Is you just said it. You said, I'm not paying them, pay them more. That's the attitude when people don't have skin in the game in a project. What? That's the attitude. What are you talking about? Because to a producer who's trying to get their movie in on budget, that attitude of like whatever, pay them more. Yeah. Is killer to a producer. Killer. How is how is me as the actor? Whose thoughts are I love the fucking I love them spend money on them I don't I don't have any answer it's it's not my decision yeah it's not your money to spend so give them more how does take a longer lunch so, who, I'm not it's not I'm not the decision maker maybe if I was a director or a producer I had money I would think differently but I don't really yeah if you had skin in the game you'd think differently I'm just saying that proves my point but anyways okay. it was very manipulative the way that you spoke about the crew but we'll move on how does that prove your point you said it. You don't have, you're not the one paying them. So pay them more. Sure. It doesn't matter anything to you. So it's the same thing when you're on a movie set. If it goes over budget, if it goes over schedule, all right, too bad. Well, Add another day. No, it's not my problem. If I, if I, if I was, if I was the producer or if I had money involved, I would be thinking differently, but I wouldn't need to potentially pay 10% more to incentivize people. Though I'm also not opposed to it because- I think crew works their fucking asses off. So, I, I mean, I don't I don't know what you just said. Everyone on a movie works their ass off for the most part. Yeah, I know. I've been on a lot. They People work hard on movies. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's not... You, you generally don't find people that don't work hard. So, I'm not saying people don't work hard. Okay. It's, a, it's amazing. There are people, you know, whatever, yeah. Dude, I'm I'm amazed at how hard people work. I think movies. more people work hard than less people. Yeah. yeah, movies like there's a culture they they work hard. There's no question. Um, but look, there's a lot, of, dude. There's a lot of nonsense rules, especially with the unions and stuff like this. Like, there's all these rules that if you have this size budget, you have to have at minimum two set photographers, yeah, and yeah. you have to have the guy to manage the cables for Those the best boy, right? right? So then you start getting these rules where it's like you have to hire people, which become, you know, another 80K expense, I remember 200K one expense, time, which you're like, I don't need that guy. I remember, I remember one time years back, I was working on a show, and the, the, the chairs weren't out. And I was sitting there, and I was like, I want to sit. But they were still setting up the location, and all the chairs are leaning against the wall, so I was like, all right, let's grab the chair. And I brought the chair out. I opened it up and I just sat in the chair and I waited. And someone came up to me and was like, don't ever do that again. I was like, oh, why? They're like, you need to let um, whatever department is in, is in charge of that to do it. And I was like, why? And they're like, you just have to. Later on, I found out. I was like, okay, I don't get it. I'm a, I'm a grown yeah, adult. Sounds right here. Chair. Yeah. It's a chair that's leaning on the wall. Right. But there's there's like a, a reason. It, no, it, it was probably a production like, person, well, yeah, like a producer. A person. And it wasn't a producer. It was uh, probably a PA, actually. Yeah. They're like, no, because if you, if they, because if you could do that, they're not needed. Right. And I was like, well, maybe they're not. <laughs> yeah. But they are because they set things up and that's normally not the situation. Normally the situation is I walk to set, everything's set up. Um, I have other things to worry about. But. In that instance, it's like, why can't I just grab it, right? So it might be a bad example because I'm not saying those people aren't needed, but there's, I'm sure there's a lot of fat to cut. There's fat. I agree. There's him. fat. I agree with him on that. There's fat. And there's rules that they the, the unions put in that you're not allowed to let other people do other people's jobs on yeah, set. Yeah, 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 You'll yeah. get fined. Right. You'll get in trouble. Right. Because of that reason. Because of that reason. Because yeah. they just don't. It's just. Yeah, yeah. And like, look, they say they're doing it to protect their people from being overworked, right? Like that's the reason. It's like, hey, we're going to designate, but it's bullshit. The more people on the set, the more money they're making. It's just, it's it's all a money-making right. thing. Let me tell you, these unions are mafia. So that's what I'm saying. They, they, yeah. they literally will cut your tires on your truck. They will yeah. come to a set and like slice tires. Yeah. That's not okay. I, I agree more with the need to cut fat and that actually... 
um, having a better effect on whatever the bottom line is uh, than the other idea. Though I'm not opposed to the other idea. I'm just saying that I, there is so much fat on set. You can see it. There's times I'm like, why do I need you to tell me that? I mean, I'm right here. I don't need to be. It's like, I heard them. I know what's going. Everything's just being echoed back to me by a person who's standing next to me all the time. I'm like, I don't need you. Right. You know? So I don't know. We'll see how that works with the unions because they're not going to change anytime soon. But so, yeah, he wants to give the crew a, a, a little piece of the pie, which I like. Um, he thinks he can cut 10% out by trimming fat, which he yeah, talked about, should right? Be, definitely. Should um, and then the other thing that he talked about is the way he wants to present the films to buyers. So the way that movies work now, and this is not how it's been. This is a very new thing, actually, is movies. When you make a film, you go to the buyers. They say, what did you pay for it? They want to know the budget. And you've got to tell it to them now because that's the culture. That's the way deals get done now. It's like you tell them the budget and then they go, okay, cool. We'll pay you the budget plus 20%. Maybe we'll two exit. That's how all the streaming companies work now. They've gotten themselves in a position where that's what it is. Whereas back in the day, you never told the budget. Yeah. You never said the budget. It's like telling someone how much it, it, how much a shirt costs to make. Correct. No one would buy that shirt for 150 fucking dollars if they knew it was made. That's exactly $3. what he said. That's actually what he said in the speech is he he said that you don't go to the Apple store and go, what did it cost you to make the phone? Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay you that much. Plus 2%. Right, right. For the, yeah. That's ridiculous. Right. So this is the way the tech companies have kind of pushed the business. Tech. Um, and they've done it by debt financing movies for a long time and kind of owning the business and being able to like really create rules, which is, which is what they do. Right. It's like they, they just pump dollars and saturate a market and then set the terms, push out the little guy. Then they can maybe potentially bring it down. Now, I mean, they also spoke a little bit about what the future of film might look like because there's a lot of controversy. It might not be streaming. Like streaming might be something that came and went during the era of price go up when like they were, you know, stock prices were just fueling Amazon and Netflix and Apple and all of these places. They were able to just, and then even little startups like Redbox and all these other places were able to get VC money and just like kind of spend more than what the movies were bringing in under these models that were the whole idea was just get users, right? Just like Facebook, get users, just get users, get them subscribed, pay more for them, put debt on top of it, spend, spend, get them, get them, right? I mean, these companies are in their stock prices are, are having a very hard time now. And a lot of people are speculating that we might be out of the era of fang. That we're not going to be the tech is not going to be leading the stock market for a long time now. That there might have been a shift. Maybe we're going back to value and other things. So under that model, does streaming work even? Right? Because if the streaming companies cannot just spend, you know, three hundred million dollars on Scorsese doing his movie, and then you know, like just like it's going out of style, and and they don't, they they have no oversight over these movies. They they never have. It's not like the traditional art of a movie studio. You know, like movie studios, great movie studios, great producers were people and companies that knew how to make 10 to 20 movies a year that were bangers. You know, like it was a real art. It was a real cultivated business. Netflix does how many movies a year? Like a hundred and 90% of them are crap, right? Like it's just different, you know, because they don't, they haven't, they don't know how to do it. They, they don't, mm -hmm. they just like, just pay, hire the best guy to do it. They hire like 10 of the best guys and girls to do it, but they're, they're spending 10 X what anyone else would on those movies, you know, like Alejandro and Itu Gonzalez and, and Alfonso Caron and Martin Scorsese and Noah Bachbaum and all these directors are getting the biggest budgets they've ever gotten to make their movies. Cause they're the dudes. They're the ones. Mm -hmm. And Netflix is like, we just want your movie. Like we'll give you whatever you want autonomy and like 10 that might not last. So anyways, he talked about that system and he said that in so many words. I mean, look, I, I really went into the concepts behind streaming and its potential collapse, but he just talked about streaming. Will it be around forever? A couple of things, right? This is kind of the conversation that's occurring at the moment. Um, but he did talk about how he wants to make his films and not tell the budgets and take them to the market and say, this is it. And, you know, he says like the eight buyers or the three buyers who are out there who are able to buy, you can bid and decide what you want to pay, but that's it. I feel like certain people have that pull, you know, like he could maybe pull that off. He could like, 
Yeah, because he's going to have movie stars in his movies. Yeah, because he has that, right, he has that power. It's like, he has, you know, there's certain, there's certain carte blanche people have. It's like, it's me. It's my movie. I got him because it's me. I got her because it's me. So that's what you get. And other, you know, other people don't have that ability. Yeah. So and and I also sense. think I also think that's why who, with Snoop Dogg and the NFTs. But I also think that's why whoever's backing this endeavor, the dude behind it, is kind of just like he's got to have some clause in there where it's like all this whatever you want to say hoopla, fine. But if push comes to shove, I need a movie starring you and Jennifer Lopez <laughs> and Matt Damon. You guarantee me that, and I'll write you the check. You can figure out how to cut your costs. Too. <laughs> yeah. But like Jersey it, girl this too. thing goes, this thing is not working it's well. Not We're Boston. Now, you know, Matt Damon is the chief creative officer of the company. Uh, yeah. He's the CEO? No, CCO, chief creative oh, officer. Oh, creative officer. Yeah. That's good. I mean, look, you those should. guys are great. They're so good. They're so good. They've had a true friendship through all of it. It's great. Yeah, I, I would, wish I could have I something like that. that with you. I would love to like have a a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Nah, Someone we, that I trust, bro. We've if I mean I would have left you in the lurch. Oh yeah, thank God you didn't become a movie star. Otherwise, I'd be talking to this microphone myself. Yeah, so, yeah there'd be one of those cutouts of your face here, but just me. I'd call you sometimes. Oh man. So, anyways. Any more thoughts on the Ben Affleck production company? Um, there's a lot of ethos that are uh, very similar to what's happening in the Web3, Film3 space, uh, which I think is interesting. It's maybe the zeitgeist of the time. Um, I don't suspect they're going to adopt blockchain in any way, but I think we're going to see more and more people do this, and you know maybe they will. I mean, the, the intention is there, um, and the tools are there, with blockchain technology. So maybe there's a way that those will come together. I mean, if someone as big as him were to start using something to really incentivize the crew in that way, I mean, that'd be incredible. And, and the tech's there now. You can put out tokens and say, hey, you're going to earn this on however many days you're working. You show up on set, it goes into your wallet. And then once that happens, the liquidity flow. I mean, it, the system is like perfect for it. Yeah. Well, Mike... Always good to talk about these things with you because you're so interested, insightful, and interested. And talk about things I don't really know much about. I don't. I'm not a filmmaker. I don't read, you know, about this stuff. I I don't know. I'm an actor. I don't know much about any of this stuff and how it works. So I don't really have much to give you, bro. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful conversation because you don't know much about anything. Right. Mike. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. And you know everything about everything. No. Says you. No. Says you. No, but if you talk to me, I'll have an opinion. I'll I'll, I'll engage. Okay. Yeah. I gave you my opinion. Thank you. I don't think that incentivizing the crew is going to make – I don't think that incentive – that – incentive is going to make them work it any might, harder it might not. than the way they already work. You might be right. That's all I'm saying. I don't think it's going to make them work much harder. You might be 100% correct. That, that that was the only thing I could relate with, and I already gave you my opinion, and you shat all over it. I think you might be correct. I think, I think the best way to save money on movies that's coming is with Unreal Engine. I think that is going to be the biggest catalyst for savings and really cutting costs because you're going to be able to achieve huge blockbuster level looking films on much scaled down budgets. Yeah. When you look at the way the tech's going, have you seen, I haven't shown you any of this stuff yet, but no, they're building sets and then the camera and the set moves. It's virtual sets. So as the camera moves, so you don't have to really physically build anything. You just do it all virtually and then go shoot it live. So you're not even green screen putting in later. It's just happening. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff is incredible. That's cool. That'll save a lot. Yeah. All right, everybody. Peace out. Take care. Pray for Mike. He's miserable. Look at him. <laughs> I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm very happy, people.